All right, so yeah, I was about to um, actually pause it and fix it and, and then have it um, done, but and, and have it done and then you know probably cut cut that wait time off of the video. I don't like doing that anyway, but I kind of I, I kind of figured it I figured out that that was what was happening because remember I changed this to um, kinetic energy calculated. I forgot to change this also to um, to calculated. So I think it was because of the function names it was confusing over here. So let's just take things back. So over here I had I had just the cal um, calculate. Sorry, I had the kinetic energy. Just the variable set to, oopsie, I had it set to zero. And over here, so I, so I think over here over here I set kinetic energy to zero. All right, so it it became an integer variable. And and like I remember I said uh, I think it's something silly you know it, this will happen in programming you know lots of times so I said um, the variable kinetic energy to zero so it thought right right so it, it thought I was trying to basically use this integer 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 variable okay because I've set it to zero it becomes an integer so it's trying to tell me so assuming look okay, so I was going to say the same thing same thing here um, let's just try it. it's going to say the same thing here if I change this to let's say zero point Five, right? It should, pro it should probably say float object is not callable. Let's let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's stop this. Run run that. See now it says float object is not callable because this value is now it has the same name. Um, I've set it to zero point five over here. Over here it thinks that I'm trying to use this float variable, and it, and of course you can't call a float variable, right? You, you can call a function because they have the same name. That's the problem. So I had to change the name. So let's go ahead and change the name. It's supposed to be zero. You could, right now it's an integer va integer variable, and it's going to think you are trying to call the integer variable. So let's change the name to to kinetic energy calculated. And then over here, when we over here, it's not it's not, it's not, not going to be, it's, not, it's not going to be confused with this name. So kinetic energy takes in the user mass user velocity, velocity and it's going to return it. So basically, we're using this. Initially it's zero, but now we've calculated it to be whatever is returned from this kinetic energy function. So no, no names are confusing confusing now. And it's going to now know that we are trying to call this kinetic energy function. And then now this should be fine. So let's run this. Four, four. All right, so the kinetic energy with mass 4.0 and velocity 4.0 is, okay, so we have to fix this here too. All right. So, so over here, the reason, the reason why it's given us the memory address of this function is because it's because it's using over here. We well, so we changed it. We changed this to kinetic energy calculated. But over here, when we were passing in the kinetic energy into the print details function, we we're supposed to pass in the kinetic energy um, calculated, right? Because now we are just passing in the the function. So it's telling us the memory address of the function. So we need to make make this also kinetic energy calculated, so it has the actual value. So let's run this again. Type in four four, and now we can see that it has the actual value. So we have to go ahead and format a few things because we can see that sometimes the values can be long, right? Let's try it again. Passing, let's say thirty four, and then fifty six point five, and we can see that the, the 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 answer can be long. The kinetic energy can be really long, right? So so let's go ahead and format the, the kinetic energy here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and call the formats function around the kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy takes in a couple of arguments. It takes in what you want to format and how you want to format it. So what I want to format is the kinetic energy. How I want to format it, I'm going to basically specify a format. I want it formatted as a float. I know the kinetic energy is a float, right? So I'm going to type in F for, to, stand for, to represent float. And then I want it formatted to two decimal places. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and specify the position before the type, before the F. So I'm going to type in point 0.2 to represent two decimal places. If I wanted to um, convert it to, to three decimal places, I'd say point 0.3. But I want two decimal places, so I'm going to say point 0.2. And then um, th that should be fine. That should be fine. But that's just for the uh, yeah, 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 that's just for the just for the kinetic energy. So now when we run this again, no matter what value we type, if we type this, 
I type in this point sixty seven whatever. When we when we run this now, we can see that. Oops. Let's see. Did so over here. Let's see. It didn't do that. Oh, actually, it did. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was looking at this instead of this. It run. See, we can see that it rounded to two decimal places. Uh, it, I, 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 I was looking at this, so I thought it didn't round it. So yeah, it's running it, running it to two decimal places as a float. So we can see over here, to two decimal places. All right. So I think it's working. Um, the formula was given to us by the book, so I'm just following the formula. So it should work. <laughs> and um, now let's. I just want to just go ahead and add a, add a new line, okay, between the questions, okay, or basically the input and then the output. So let's try to separate them somewhere. You know, after this, after these two statements. So this is a function that prints out the details, and this this is the line that basically calls a function that prints out the details. Before that, we can that we sh we should actually add a line break. Now you can do it in, in several ways. You can basically add a new line character before this before this uh, prints function displays anything. Before it prints anything, we can go ahead and add adding a new line character, which is backslash n. Now when the when the interpreter sees the backslash n, it's going to move the position. Okay, so after printing out. Be, sorry, before it prints out the, this this stri string here, this this output here, which is the kinetic energy with mass, basically this whole line, before it prints it out, so it's going to see the backslash n, right? And it's going to move the position from where it's at right now here to the next line here. The new line character is basically going to move the position from where it's at to the next line. And then anything, af anything that comes after the new line character will be displayed on that next line going. So... By, by seeing the backslash n. So when you type in the backslash, you're starting an, an escape sequence. You're saying, hey, when I type in the backslash, anything that comes after it, one, if anything that comes after this backslash, if it's a special character, there are, there are a couple of them. Actually, there are, there are a bunch of them. So it's, if it's a special character, then do what it's supposed to do. When an n precedes a backslash, it just creates a new line. It moves the position from where it's at to the next line. So this bit will basically tr um, do that for us. If if I run this and I type in three and three, we can see that there's a there's a new line here, because it saw this new line character. Both both the back both the backslash and the end together, it's one character. Okay, it's it's stored in memory as one character. So they work together. You can't put this you can't put the space in, in between them. Then they, they become something different. So both of these creates a new line character. It moves the position from where it's at to the next line and anything that comes after the new line character will be displayed from that next line going. So that's why we can see we, we can see that. So there's one way to do that. Another way to do that is I'm going to go ahead and remove this and then run this again. Another way to do that, so now we're back to square one. When I do that, we're back to square one. All right, so another way to do that is by just calling the print function passing in nothing. So over here, this is a statement that prints out our details, right? So before that, I can go ahead and call the print function. Now, when you call the print function and you tell it to print something like, let's say this, and I run this, we can see it's printing exactly what, what we told it to print. This is exactly what we told it to print. It's printing that for us. But the print function works by default. Anytime it prints out what, whatever you told it to print, it moves the position uh, from, again. It ends with a new line character. The new so the print function always ends with a new line character. After it's printed, whatever you've told it to print, it's going to move the position from where it's at to, to the next line. So after printing out this, after printing out this, the position was here. But the print function by default always ends with a new line character. So it's going to move the position from where it's at over here to the next line. And anything that comes after this thing that you've told it to print, okay, or this string, is going to be printed from that next line going. And that's why we can see that anything that comes after it, which is, which is print details, which is basically this output, it's going to come after that new line character, right? I mean, I'll, sorry, after whatever you told it to print, okay? After whatever you told it to print. But if you call the print function over here, passing in nothing, what you're saying is go ahead and print nothing on this line, right? And when you're done, but the thing is by, by default, the print function always ends with a new line character. So by doing this, you're saying print out nothing on that line, but but by default, the print function is, also, is going to end that line with a new line character. It's going to move the position from where it's at to the next line. It's going to print nothing on this on that particular line over here, right? But it's going to also end it with an, end with a new line character, move the position from, position from where it's at to the next line, because by default, that's how the print function works. So when I run this, 
and I type in 45, let's say, do we can see that it's also working. When I, when I type in 45, 45, we can see it's also working here. All right, so it printed out nothing on this line, but by default, the print function also ends with a new line character. So it moved from here to here, and anything that came after that print function, anything that came after this print function, which is this, was displayed on that next line, all right? This is this triggers this um, this output to be displayed. And that's how we see this. So that's that's another way to do it. So whichever one is comfortable for you, whichever one comes natural to you, uh, feel free to do it. All right, sorry I was talking a bit, you know, sorry that it was, it was a bit rough. Sometimes I get excited when I'm doing these things, so I talk, you know, I guess fast, I, I, I don't know, all rough. But, um, and also sorry for, you know, the, problems I mean not necessarily sorry sorry but you know I'm trying to be you know I'm, I'm saying sorry because I just want to, you to know that um, it, it was a good inconvenience right it was a good inco it was good because we, we, we all learned something from trying to figure it out so I hope you understand where I'm coming from with a sorry okay so yeah don't feel too bad if you're offended by that or if you think um, I, I don't have to say it okay, it's just it's a sorry in a good way all right so I th uh, we're done. Th this program is working. Now, if, the f if that formula is correct, <laughs> it was given to us by the book, so it should be correct. And I think we formulated it correct too. All right, so if you have any questions, as always, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to, uh, respond to them. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right, then. Bye-bye.